Hey, it's Trey with the Trey Bruce channel. Um, October's coming up, or the fall time. Unfortunately, it's already coming up, but we've got an Oktoberfest five gallon beer kit. This one's gonna be fun to make, as they all are. So first things first, it comes with the instruction sheet. The grain bag, which I think is a little bigger than normal. I say that because I've already looked in here, to be honest, and it's got a lot of grains. This is at least twice as many as I've seen before for one kit, so that's pretty neat. One neat thing about this kit, too, is, um, not that this is really good or bad, just different and interesting, it only has one bag of hops. One pouch of hops, rather, but you just simply add in this whole packet at the start of the 60-minute boil, so it's going to be a really easy boil. Got the typical six and a quarter pound of Pilsen Light malt extract. And then, of course, last thing, and possibly most important, is the US 05 yeast, which we put in at the end. So that's everything that comes in this kit. We're going to go get the water started. All right, we've got our rather large five gallon kettle here. And I went to a class the other day I've been using distilled water. They said that's actually not the best water to use, so I tried getting this spring water. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, I'm just gonna start adding three total gallons of water. Adding in the last of the three gallons here, we've got the heat turned up to high. We're gonna get this up to 155, about 160 degrees, and that's when we'll steep in the grains. So while the water is getting up in temperature, I went ahead and put the grains in the bag. This is a lot more grains than I've seen before, so this will be interesting. And then as I showed, there was only one bag of hops, but because there was quite a bit, um, I went ahead and separated them and put them in these bags as well. So we'll add these in at the same time, but I just felt like I should separate them to kind of give them more air more room to spread out. Alright, we're sitting at about 160 degrees. So again, we're going to take our uh, grain bag full of grains and put it back in there to steep. I'm going to set it so using my spoon, big spoon here, um, I kind of assemble it like this. Put this through the handle and then the spoon kind of I think if I flip it this way yeah there we go I can use the spoon to apply pressure against the bag and it's holding it above the bottom of the kettle here so it is steeping kind of like tea as I always say but it's not going to scorch the bottom so it's perfect okay so we've got a little less than 30 seconds left in um, steeping these grains just stirring it around here the last few seconds and as soon as this is done I'm gonna crank it up to high um, and get it to the point where it very first starts boiling and then we'll add in the dry malt extract and there we go okay so we have the wort at a rolling boil here you can tell there's a lot of steam, that's for sure. So I just turn the heat almost to off, not off, but low. We have our dry extract, dry malt extract over here. I'm going to stir this around real quick, kind of even out the temperature throughout the kettle. And then I'll go ahead and start pouring this in slowly. still stirring it in. I got all of it added, um, but I'm just making sure it's all dissolved before we turn the heat all the way up. I did want to show we have this firm cap product. I've actually had this for like a few weeks, but this will be my first time actually using it. Basically it's for foam control. So if this were to start boiling over, there's a lot of foam that builds up prevents that. It kind of like breaks the top of the foam, if that makes any sense. 
So it says to add about two drops per gallon. Okay, so that was 10 drops since this is five gallons. So again, everything's all mixed up here. I'm gonna keep stirring it though for a minute, get it up to a boil, and uh, then we'll add in the hops. All right, so I've got my two hop bags that I showed in the beginning of the video. I just set my timer for about 45, 46 minutes. So I have some time to explain this. This is up to a rolling boil. Um, all we do is drop these in. This is gonna be a definite time you wanna watch for boil over. So I'm actually gonna turn it down for just a moment and stir these in a little bit. Make sure that they um, kind of mix in pretty well. So again, normally, with this batch, it's just the hops that you add in to the beginning of the 60 minute boil. But I've got something new I'm gonna try with 15 minutes left in the, into the boil that I'm really excited to try. I think it's gonna help with the finished product, so we'll get to that when the boil's down to 15 minutes left. So we are at about 15, 14 minutes left in the boil. I wanted to show what I was talking about that I was going to add in at the last 15 minutes into the boil. It's this pack of Irish moss. I always have trouble finding the camera there. Um, basically, the way I think I was explained it, but I can't remember the exact like science behind it, um, how they described it, but it's like, it's either positive or negatively charged. Either one of those, I don't know. But it kind of like attracts all of the stuff that floats around in beer and makes it sink to the bottom so that it kind of clears up your beer. I know I've looked it up, you can use like gelatin and other things to make your beer clearer. Um, but I wanted to try Irish Moss. It says to use a teaspoon per five gallons, so I've got that in a bowl here because it says to rehydrate it before use. So I know, even though this water is kind of cold, um, because it's boiling, it's going to be sanitized. So basically, I'm just gonna pour this in here. Again, you do that 15 minutes before the end of the boil, and you rehydrate it. So just continuing to boil for 13 or so more minutes here, and then we will start chilling it. We just reached 60 minutes into the boil. So I'm turning off the heat, got my sink down here, gonna fill it with water, and move this over there, put the lid on it that I've got here, um, to protect it from contamination, and actually, for any of that, gotta remove the hops, um, but anyway, we're going to pull the board down as fast as we can. That does take some time, so while we do that, I will get everything else sanitized, and then we'll get it over into the six gallon carboy fermenter that I have. Just wanted to show the ice bath we've got going on with the kettle here. So, before I added in all of this ice, I did it with just water to take the initial uh, scorching heat. <laughs> out of the kettle so I didn't waste too much ice um, but it is in a nice bath it's gonna get down to 75 degrees over here got a bottle of sanitizer the funnel which I'm gonna sanitize and then every other thing every other thing that needs sanitized is in here as well and then we'll do the carboy as well
this all the way around. Like this, I'll do this for about a minute. Okay, so got the carboy sanitized. I sprayed a little around here. I know I didn't touch that, but that's sanitized too. So we've got Probably almost three gallons of water. Wow, so I didn't lose much at all. Plus maybe half a gallon. But anyway. Okay, so we've got the wart added to my chair. You'll see why I did that in just a moment. Like I said a moment ago, I had probably two and two and three quarter gallon or so in here. So I'm just taking this water and filling it up to the five gallon mark. Okay, so it's filled up to um, five gallons. And so I've got the bung on here. Sanitize my hands, sanitize the bung, and this is exactly why. Whew, this is exactly why I move it onto my chair here. This is what I found to be the easiest way to aerate it. I just swish it around a lot for about a minute or two, and then we'll add the yeast in. Okay, so this is the last little clip here. I've got the yeast and my sanitizing solution in the, on the floor here. Stir that up, make sure it all goes to the bottom so that we get all the yeast. That's been sanitized, so we don't have to worry about it touching the carboy here. Make sure all that gets in there. So we've got our bung, which was just sanitized, which, by the way, my hands, I've cleaned them like 20 times today. <laughs> But uh, I just wanted to say, my hands have been cleaned right before this clip, so I'm mixing the yeast in here, giving it a little more oxygen. But the main purpose of doing this now, since it is aerated, is I just want to get that yeast all inside the liquid here, instead of just sitting on the foam at the top. Okay, so I'd say that's good. So. Make sure that bung is pushed in good enough. And we've got our airlock, which you'll see there's that little hole in there. That's where we're gonna put the hose. Okay, that's fastened in there. We've got a cup full of sanitized water. So there's our hose. One end goes, well, let's see this one first. One end goes into the hole I just showed. I can get it in there. There we go. It's supposed to be easy. And then, like I said, the other end just goes into the sanitized water. I'm trying to figure out. What, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So, <laughs> just stays here for probably three weeks. I'll probably keep this in here for about three weeks um, and we should be set then I'll bottle it in I'll bottle it in three weeks and then two weeks after being in bottles I'll do another video showing my review of the beer see how it tastes see how it comes out so stay tuned be back in about five weeks or so with that video